Hey guys, Dusty Baker with Customers Bison. Welcome back to the channel. We just got through working, um, well, wasn't happy with it, but we got about uh, half of the uh, Dunbar herd worked at uh, Mom and Kevin's place, uh, the Dunbar home, I guess you could say, the Dunbar herd home. But uh, we got about half of them worked, uh, kind of a, had a disappointing morning, unfortunately, uh, and I take the blame for it for not getting the animals prepared. They finally, um have caught up and outsmarted us for sure and uh i knew it happened someday but uh i didn't get them caught yesterday and uh last night i usually catch them before the night before but i didn't get them caught and i had a little bit of faith i could catch them this morning uh but they uh they're smart animals and they've figured out uh what happens when they come down a certain lane and it didn't work out so anyways now we're on to the ponderosa side so I've been working out here getting this ready. Uh, luckily, the Ponderosa already had a lot of really good corral infrastructure. And um, that was one of the benefits of getting this place. And so the positive is, uh, is that's already set. And so what I've done is just kind of stemmed off of it. Um, and like I said before in a couple of my previous videos, I uh, didn't get a squeeze chute. I don't have a a true handling system up here. I don't have an alley and all that. Um, so today, Doc Parsons um, from Stratford is bringing his mobile uh, Berlinic system down, and it is a huge system. It, it's like I said, it's hydraulic, and it, you can pull it on a trailer. So, but he's about 30 minutes away from us, and just luckily to have him and his expertise and knowledge along with him bringing his system down. He runs hundreds of animals, all critters through his squeeze chute, and, and bison, of course. And um, so he's bringing that down. We're waiting on him. But what I was going to do is show you a couple of things, uh, some, some stuff that we've done. we still got work to do. But what this will be about, here's a Dakota Pure Cast, by the way. It's going to be their second time to ever be worked. But the thing is, is we're going to learn a lot. Um, when Doc brings his system in, uh, we'll just see how the bison work basically because I don't have a squeeze chute over here yet um, We've got some learning to do just like I had learned this morning always learning, but um, So after today, we'll have a good idea of how the bison to react to these pins and what's the best way to work them And I'm sure we'll make changes to it in the future, but uh, today will be a good base um, at, For working the bison for the first time at the Ponderosa so um, I've been I got some freestanding panels put together is what I've got um, and, and we're working the big Joe herd which is I've only got nine and then the Dakota pure calves there's uh, 11 of them and Haas is included in that here let's let these guys out what are you doing okay look at him laying down this is a well, here's the big joe herd i caught them it, it didn't take much to catch them i've been letting them come in this pen actually and i prepared to catch them i didn't do a very good job of preparing the dunbar herd to get them caught but uh, this is this is what we want we want them over here chilling and relaxing uh not stressed out this is awesome because in just a little bit when we get them up and we get them pushing we start pushing them they'll get worked up but this is a this is a good relaxing estate before they get worked um so, but what we did is we made a couple adjustments. Um, I put a gate in to get them on that side of the barn is one thing I did. But uh, we went ahead and put the rubber um, conveyor belting across here. And just uh, one of the reasons we did that on that side is one, this is a pressure point. This is where we push them. And, uh, you know, they want to go out. They want to get out. And so this kind of deters them from seeing the pasture so that they um, won't try to go out. And they'll spin on you and come back out. So that's why we block that side out and try to push them through here. Put a new gate up with an overhead, a solid gate. I still got a little bit of um, sheet metal to put on. That'll swing open to us so they can go in. And then as they go in, you catch them with the swing. And it's, uh, I guess, a bump gate. It hits them in the butt. And you can latch it right there. And so uh, that's something uh, that I also did. But really, um, I built a pen that I've had for a while with freestanding panels. I haven't done a lot of um, infra infrastructure work-wise on the 
handling system on these uh, panels, and, or sorry, on the corral, uh, you can see this is a lot of existing stuff. And this is this is two and seven eighths pipe. This stuff is solid. These are old school, uh, heavy duty cow panels welded on here. And uh, yeah, you got a two and seven eighths upright, a two and three eighths top rail. And this stuff has been here for a while. Actually, my stepdad, Kevin, built these, I don't even know how long ago. But um, we, we actually may use this eventually. And this is what I use to load out um, some of the Texas animals to go get worked. And uh, this is where I sold some of them. They came through here. So um, I am happy about this. And we may have to use this in the future. So with a couple of uh, adjustments. So really haven't had to do a lot of changes. But and we got our boy here, Hoss. Brandon, good to see you again. Restaining panels here to tag into your stuff. Ready for another day's work? Oh, yeah. It's out and bring that one over. No, no, no. I'm oh. to push it. I either need to drive out there. Yeah, I'll just pick them up and move them. And then I can just pull up in here so far. Okay. And we can stop it wherever. Okay. And then I can unhook and go on out that way. And and just Pick it up. Sit out there till we get ready to go. Okay. This is the system. The no, system. System. Just a hydraulic squeeze chute would be nice. Makes a world of difference, you'll see it today. The speed, safety, noise, <laughs> everything. Just gotta get them here. Yep. All right, buddy.
Cheese.
Bo? around the bison very safely and vaccinate them, ear tag them, do whatever he needs and even preg check them around this spot. And then the second section is when we can get one or two in and we can squeeze them so they don't move around a lot so that way they go in there easier. And then this is kind of like a backup spot where we can put the rest of them in there and so that way they're all locked up and we can get them in and out of there safely. So yeah, that's about it. And this, again, everybody that doesn't know, this is Brandon. This is uh, Doc's grandson, right? Yes, sir. There you go. Some of y'all seen him around working on Big Joe, and Big Joe got stuck a little bit. This one a little went a little bit smoother. Yeah, yeah. You say? Definitely. I mean, one of these setups is pretty pricey, but yeah. boy, does it work out a lot better than those manual yeah, squishers. Makes it safer too. Definitely. Safer for the people and for the animals. Yes, sir. First time working the animals at the Ponderosa and it worked great. We really didn't have any hiccups, <laughs> to be honest with you, which is always good when you work bison. And uh, it went it went really well. The, the calves worked well and uh, Big Joe, he did what we asked him to do. And um, it took me a minute to transition them from our big box here um, to get them run down our alley into Doc's handling system. And um, as you can see there, uh, Doc was here. It almost took longer to set it up than it did to actually work the animals. I mean, we've only got 20 animals here. We got 11 calves and nine adults with the Big Joe herd. His system is awesome, and uh, he's ran hundreds of animals through there, and it worked out so good. And uh, it really makes me want one of those systems because not only did it go fast because um, you trust the equipment, you trust the system, the hydraulics make it a lot easier so you're not getting in there with the animals. Uh, you're, it's your safety. The safety of it was, is, is you can almost, like Doc said, you can almost work them by yourself. That's how good of a system it is. And, and if you've got good handling uh, facilities and good handling system and your animals have gone through that, um, you could almost work the bison with one or two people with a type of system like that somebody running the hydraulics and uh, that's the goal is to have something like that or at least a hydraulic squeeze chute so that uh we're safer and the animals are safer and uh timing is is uh quicker because you want those animals in you want to get them worked tagged whatever you're doing with them preg check you know those things can slow you down you want them in and out as fast as possible low stress and so that's my goal is to have a low stress environment for these animals and uh, good equipment. I think everything went pretty smooth um, here at the Ponderosa. It actually went better than it did at the, at the uh, Dunbar place. But, uh, and that's, that's my fault because uh, I didn't prepare to catch them ahead of time. I've just been spooled by catching them the night before and I didn't do it, I got busy and, and I, I slacked off there. So. Um, but we'll, we'll, Kevin and I, we'll get them worked. We got five cows to work and some calves, so that won't be bad, but uh, glad to get these animals worked, so uh, good day. All right, hey guys, we got Brandon here, uh, Doc's grandson, future of bison ranching right here. So uh, Brandon, how did you get into bison ranching? Obviously Doc's your, your grandfather, but when did you get started? How old were you and kind of what was your experience with that? So when I was younger, of course, uh, we were all we always raised bison and being around them but you know i thought it was just like a farming thing that was just going around but about the age of nine that's when i started to realize the genetics the herd building and everything about bison and so that's when i started to realize on how he's carrying his genetics and going to more cells and that kind of stuff 
So that's when I started to get into it because if you look down genetics that went back to like 30 years ago, it gets pretty crazy on how far and how good they get throughout the generations. And that's how I've just looked at it is look at the different bone structure and the just type of the animal that it could have been back then, but now it is today. So you work with, with mainly the bison or what, what are some of the other animals that you work with with yeah, your granddad? So, uh, of course he's a veterinarian so I get to see a lot of the animals he gets to work on but bison is the main thing that I've always grown up with but then I also show beef cattle so we work those every once in a while. So the beef cattle that's what a lot of people I think have a misconception about is they see dusty hand feeding and interacting with them up close. Yes. What are some of the differences between the American bison and a standard beef cattle and, and show heifers? Okay, so uh, standard beef cattle, of course they can be raised for beef production or dairy cattle, but uh, the show cattle, you just kind of like bison, you breed them to a specific sire so you can carry down the genetics for a better bone structure or weight or however you want it. But they don't go in the shoot as easy as bison because bison want to get in and out of a place that they're not sure, not sure of at a certain amount of time. And so beef cattle, they're pretty calm around humans because they are around them a lot. And so you kind of have to work them a little bit more in those shoots or in regular shoots. Yeah. And, it, and the, they get a little bit cantankerous and a little bit chaotic, those bison, when they get put up in some pens. Like, again, they yeah. look pretty calm out in the pasture, but yeah. the second you get them cornered up, they don't it, like tight spaces. It's a different story. They don't like tight spaces and they love to find corners and yeah. try and bust. Any way they can find a little hole or gap, that's where they're going to head to. Yep. So you're talking about welding. You're in. You're doing FFA and some, yes. some welding stuff at school. So what do you uh, think like in the, in the future for, for after high school and after your high school career? What do you think? Uh, join the family business or? Yes, sir. I'm definitely going to be helping with the bison still and my sister's gonna be getting married pretty soon and she wants me to help her with the uh, bison because she's gonna eventually take over for my papa. So I'm just gonna be on and off there and then maybe go to welding school for the degree. So we'll see how everything turns out. But that's my plan. Well, we got a bright young man with a very bright future over here. So again, I know we appreciate you over here helping us at Cross Timbers Bison Ranch and all the other local bison ranchers out here in Southern Oklahoma. So. Thank you. Thank you for, for coming out and helping us. Yes, sir. Yes, sir, you got it. All right, so kind of the, well, the highlight of the day is I get to hang out with everybody. We get to socialize and have dinner together and hang out. Um, but uh, one of the other highlights of the day is um, we got our Canadian bison, our Wolverine bison calves yesterday and um, we're gonna mix the Dakota Pure calves in with them that have been here for since December. So they're all of the same age and approximately about the same weight. So um, they're gonna grow up together. And so what we're gonna do is let them in. The Canadian calves were put in the Dakota Pure pen, the big corral, and uh, <coughs> we had to put the Dakota Pure calves in here because we had to work them today. So we're gonna take them back out and put them where they were. Yeah. All in Oklahoma. No more in the north. Down here was hot. Come on, Cam. <laughs> Bison. Nice. Come on, boss. Come on. Go ahead, go ahead. Go ahead.
want to say that I am lucky to have this place. That's first of all, I feel like this setting that we're at right now is the sun setting and stuff. Such a pretty spot. Just very thankful to have this place. And big day. Got the Dunbar herd partially worked. That's another story. But um, it's nice to finally had our first handling, our first working um, at the Ponderosa. Little little nerve wracking doing it at a new place that we haven't done it before. And uh, I thought it went really smooth. And uh, I need to thank Doc for bringing his system down. Uh, he's got a heck of a system and I, uh, I just really need to thank him and his expertise. He's, he knows so much about bison and having him right here on the property is it's a huge deal. He's 30 minutes from me. And uh, he brought Brandon with him, his grandson, and he's a smart kid, and he helped him today. And he actually ran the hydraulic chutes. I didn't mention that, but uh, uh, that's awesome to see a young young kid like Brandon. He's a freshman, um, and uh, I appreciate him coming today. I want to thank my guys Cole and Chandler for always coming and filming and getting into stuff they never know what they're going to get into for sure. Uh, and today it's been a long day. Worked you know the Dunbar part of the Dunbar herd and all went through some shenanigans there and then came over and got everything set up and Doc brought his system down and, and we got we got all the Big Joe herd worked Big Joe and the uh, eight cows uh, that went with him four cows four yearling heifers and then uh, we got the Dakota pure calves 11 of them um, including Haas is in that group got them worked and uh, I think it took maybe an hour to actually work them and so that went great. And uh, now we've just got to make adjustments to everything. And um, I've got to buy a system. I've got to go find a system out there so that we can have here at the Ponderosa so that we uh, we don't have to get Doc to drive his system down here. And uh, that's the goal uh, between here and the fall is make uh, adjustments uh, to what we learned today. And I, I even have a, I've got a, a notepad here wrote, wrote on the back of a, an all flex deal of you know docs drawing stuff up for me of how to handle uh, the bison a little bit better and uh, I'll take that and hopefully we'll get a system by the fall a hydraulic system and um, you know we'll do that so anyways I and I want to thank uh, all my help today I have a lot of help today uh, my buddy Bo Proctor from um, um, lives in Oklahoma City uh, coached football with Bo I thank him for coming down finally making it down here to to work some bison for the first time and I, he's hooked aren't you hooked Absolutely. yeah of course <laughs> so uh and my brother it's brandon uh second time to come and help he he worked and cole came up the day before and helped me um get stuff prepared and i always have too much going on and um cole's becoming a ranch hand now he's he's about he's getting there so cole helped out and um a lot of the stuff that we do is like uh just say it's just ranching it it's just, it really is it's just it got a little western this morning working uh some of the dunbar animals and calves dealing with crazy calves them suckers are so fast and athletic but it's a little bit of a rodeo little, little bo got to get out there and <laughs> yeah. chase some little chase while. some calves i'm gonna sleep good tonight yeah that's <laughs> for sure Sure, it's been a long day, but I really thank you guys for for your help and um, Kevin, Kevin, he he spends a lot of time with my Dunbar herd, and of course I'm always out here working with the at the Ponderosa, getting it going. But now after you work the animals, it doesn't stop. You, you learn and you grow, uh, you fix things, but it doesn't stop. We're, we're building fence. We're that's about to start a new project here, so it never really slows down. Um, I, I get a little um, stressed out. You know a week or a couple of days of before we work the bison because i'm just want everything to go good uh but we've got a lot of exciting things that have just happened not only did we work the bison here for the first time we got our canadian calves from wolverine bison here and uh that's a foundation herd for us and that we're really excited about about them with the dakota pure calves that we're mixing together and uh, like i said it's a foundation herd you've got all those females that is is gonna be set up for what we want to do here at the Ponderosa, and then we may bring cows over from uh, the Dunbar herd eventually too, just because we have more grazing land and stuff. So, 
Um, I want to thank my wife too as well. Uh, she, we're about to cook dinner and hang out. She got all the food ready and stuff. She does all the weights. She writes all that down. She helps us get all that stuff set up. Um, and I want to thank her for being a part of this. And she doesn't get to be out here with me that often, but she does when she can. And we have Brooks, of course, and that makes it difficult to come out here and work and stuff. I wish she was out here more with me, but I just I want to thank her um, as well. And then I need to thank Daniel um, from Arms Family Homestead, a brother-in-law, of course. He's been doing this with me along with Kevin since the beginning. This is our fourth year of working the bison. And he's been there since the crazy first first time we worked the bison. Didn't have a barn, didn't have a covering, and uh, that was that was real wild. And uh, he's been with us through the whole the whole process, and and he's seen the changes of it. And so for him, it's not even just the help; it's the the tractor, <laughs> the, the welder, and all the stuff that came in yeah, handy yeah, this know, week. I use Daniel's welder. Like Kevin and I use that sucker probably 300 days. We have it with us probably 300 days out of the, of the year than he has it so um yeah thankful for for daniel as well coming and, and he films and stuff too and um we're just happy he can help work the bison and stuff and he's when, when you got guys that have spent time with those animals it makes it a lot easier and you can go back and daniel and i were in the national park service together working together and going out with those bison and hanging out with them in the national park service for the first time we shared that moment together and it's kind of cool that we still do that now with my bison and so that's fun that um you know we did that and that's where my love for these animals started was in the national park service here at the chickasaw national recreation area here in Sulphur, my hometown so so thank you guys for everything you guys do um it takes time out of your weekends away from your wives um and uh family and whatnot and come out here and be a part of this show <laughs> and just ranch it but yeah just ranch it for fun. sure but uh stuff. yeah it is fun and it's it's community it's fun to be a part of and um you know aunt and uncle showed up to come hang out with us because they live down the road and mom and kevin and brooks is out here now so that's what it's about and that's what we want to grow as a as a bison community and people just appreciate these animals we do a lot for them <laughs> We do we do a lot for them, and so uh, just thankful for them. These animals have given us this opportunity to even raise them, and uh, having this land. So, and I thank friends and family for for all the help. So, thank you guys. Cool. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah.